hi guys welcome to another video in today's video as you can see by the title we are going to be talking about my october tbr we are officially in that fall season we are officially in that spooky season which means it's time for some fantasy reads and if we're lucky some mystery thrillers or psychological thrillers I'm going to be showing you the books that I have on my list for October that I would like to read. I do have a hefty selection, so we're going to see if I actually end up reading them. But we're going to start with some, some of the easy choices. So the first book on my list is Crown of Midnight by Sarah J. Maas. As you can see from my last few videos, I did start reading Crown of Midnight and I have been really enjoying it. I did only get about a quarter into the book, so I did not get far, but I'm definitely, definitely going to finish it sooner rather than later. I have been annotating the book, typically when it comes to my fantasy series, um, depending on which one I like more, which one like deserves some extra love and care i do annotate my fantasy series i do this because i would like if i sometimes i take breaks between books and series just to let my mind rest to let myself read a different book from like a different world i am a mood reader at the end of the day so sometimes i don't like to read books and series back to back to back to back because I do get burnt out and I do get bored and I just want something new I want something different but I do annotate my fantasy books so that when I do decide to come back to a book in a series I can refresh my memory on what I read the mo the romance that was possibly in that book and what the world is like what the characters are like and what state the plot or the story was in when I left or when I had put down the book. For this book, for Crown of Midnight, I have been annotating it. So I did annotate it a fair bit. Like I said before, I only got a quarter into the book and these are a lot of annotations for just being a quarter into the book. I do go ham when it comes to my um, annotations. Sometimes I wish that I wouldn't because when I do annotate a book, it does take me very 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 long to finish it and that is the reason why i'm only a quarter into the book whereas i could have been halfway at this point but i am freaking loving this book it's giving five stars at this point i have no complaints about it so far my attention is like on this book so much that i'm just so eager to finish it i have started work again as of recently so i haven't been able to pick up the book since the last time i spoke to you guys but I do plan on picking up this book again soon. Now, once I do finish this book, I have been, or at least since I've been reading this book, I have been thinking about possibly just picking up the next book in this series right after. So that brings me to the next book on this TBR. The next book in this series is The Assassin's Blade. Now, l let me be clear with you. Let's let's get this straight with each other. This is a novella she's a thick novella for sarah j mass novellas are pretty much like 100 pages at most or 150 pages at most now this book how long are you sweetie 435 pages it's base. it's the length of like a normal book now this book it's a prequel to the throne of glass series so this book technically takes place before book one which is throne of glass however when sarah j mass published this book she published it after crown of midnight people have different opinions or um beliefs on when someone should reach read this book in the series some people say that they should read it before throne of glass some people say that they should still read it after crown of midnight now the reason why i have decided to read it after crown of midnight is because from what i have heard i don't know how crown of midnight goes i don't i don't even know how the entire series go i only know bits of pieces of information i only know like recognize certain names of characters but i don't i don't i know little to nothing and from what i have heard about the assassin's blade is if one if someone does read this before crown of midnight they are more likely to be spoiled about information that has that is learned in 
Throne of Glass and Crown of Midnight. And I am a person that hates being spoiled. I I want to be able to enjoy to enjoy something in my own time at my own pace. And I did not want to be spoiled on this series two books before two two books ahead to say the least. So that is why I decided to read this in a or at least read this series in publication order rather than timeline order. I find that that works best for me. I enjoy the story more and I think that is the reason why I'm enjoying Crown of Midnight more. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, the way I'm enjoying Crown of Midnight so far, it makes me feel like I would want to pick up the Assassin's Blade. I really hope I still feel that way once I do finish Crown of Midnight. It also depends on how long I take to finish Crown of Midnight because I do annotate that book and if I pick up this book, I will be annotating it as well. I'm excited about what I'm going to learn in this book. For this book in particular, I know that from what like just like flipping through the pages, like I haven't read anything and I know people usually get spoiled when it comes to um, flipping through pages, they get spoiled. But uh, I haven't gotten spoiled, but I do see Selena's name pop up in here a few times, which is something that I didn't know. I thought that for the Assassin's Blade, you follow a different set of characters, but these characters relate in some sense to Selena, the main character of the Throne of Glass series. So now that I see her name in this book, I think we are going to touch upon her backstory, but we're also going to learn about her time as an assassin before she was captured by the king and the guards. That isn't a spoiler. Um, in this book, you're following the hardships that she has faced as being an assassin. I'm also very excited to learn. I, I feel like I'm really going to enjoy this book because I'm so eager to learn about Selena's backstory. I really want to know more about her as a character and what it was like her being an assassin. I want to learn about the relationships she had, what um, Arobin, her trainee, um, when she was an assassin, who what he was like, and if they had a good relationship, if he was a disliked character, she didn't like him, if she had some resentment over him. I just want to know more. And that's another reason why I feel like I'm liking Crown of Midnight a little bit more, because we're gaining some backstory in a, a little bit. Uh, with this series, you get a little information, just enough to keep you going, but not too much where it's just like, okay, what else is there? Like, I'm I'm not intrigued enough or I'm too intrigued that it's just, okay, what else is there for me to learn? I feel like there's that's everything that I need to know to understand Selena as a main character. No. I've gotten enough information to just make me want to just blow through this series so that is this book the next book that i would like to read is lore olympus volume four now i have been enjoying this uh, greek mythology retelling of hades and persephone for a while now i do take my time when it comes to reading these because honestly i can read this book in a day <laughs> shoot less than a day. I could read this book in like three hours two hours and the last book volume three was actually my favorite of the series I did rate it five stars I this book is different from your normal graphic novels I know like for example Heartstopper I have read that series but that series is in black and white and the obviously the art style is a little different this art style is different as well but instead of it being in black and white it's like like in color and i just freaking love how they use color for this book because it really gets me in the story and it makes me want to pick up the book sooner than i normally expect to in this book we do follow uh, persephone and hades like i said before persephone she is a student in college she lives with another greek goddess named artemis she has been wanting to get away from her mom persephone has been wanting to get away from her mom for a long time now she feels like she has been shielded a lot in her life and she just wants to become her own person she wants to be independent she wants to become her own woman and moving out of her out of her mom's house living with artemis going to school and just trying to be a normal 
girl and just have a normal life is something that she craves for and she's actually really enjoying so far in her life she is amazing at school she gets great grades but then one night when she meets Hades at a party that Artemis has dragged her out to and she's wearing this beautiful dress when she is compared to Aphrodite as Persephone being the most beautiful girl and Persephone puts Aphrodite to shame that really sets the whole plot line in motion she makes an enemy of Aphrodite but Hades is intrigued by her she, he feels drawn to her for some reason and he wants to speak to her he wants to get to know her but he knows that it's wrong and he's not worthy of her and he's a god of the underworld she's the goddess of spring and they they would never match and it's just opposites attract because she's intrigued by him as well you continue them throughout this series of them having these encounters and being physically attracted to, to each other but also emotionally attracted to each other they you can tell from Hades and Persephone that they are broken inside to some extent that they are sad about the way their life is to some degree and they do connect with that with each other at multiple points throughout the story so in this book we do continue the story of Hades and Persephone where Hades has gotten an internship at Hades corporation in the underworld and something that I do have to say about this series is even though it is a retelling it is more of a modern retelling of Olympus and the underworld and just gods as a whole like they have cell phones they can watch tv they have cars they um the underworld it's like a corporation it's a business building and it's very more present day for like us like us like me and like driving around it's like it's very we can connect to it more but it's also weird in a sense because you always think of gods and goddesses wearing robes and um it being a little more rural and and just different you know but Hades knows that she shouldn't be working for him and it's just not great but she's very insistent on working at his job it is good experience and she does want to learn more about herself as a person and working at this job will I guess offer that information so I don't really know what else to expect in this book but that is this book okay now something that I do have to say is that if I do read Laura Olympus, I am very much going to be in the mood to read another Greek mythology retelling about Hades and Persephone or just any Greek mythology retelling but I will say that when I did read Laura Olympus volume 3 I was in that mood and I ended up picking up and starting another series that I really shouldn't have but I really enjoyed that book so that brings me to the next book in this CBR. So I think that if I do start Lore Olympus I will want to pick up another Greek mythology retelling and I think that I will probably want to continue reading another mythology re retelling of Hades and Persephone. This is the A Touch of Darkness series following Hades and Persephone for the millionth time and A Touch of Darkness is book one in the series and for this book that I'm holding up A Touch of Ruin is book two. Book one is where you follow Persephone. She is an aspiring journalist. She is an intern I believe at a very well-known um, newspaper publishing um, company and Hades is a club owner. In this world, in this retelling, like Lore Olympus, it is very modern. Humans are aware of gods. Like they see gods like walking on the street and like just passing. Gods do look different than what we would normally think they look like. For example, the gods in this series, they have horns and that is their way of showing their ethereal power to the humans. It is the same compared to any other story 
Hades is god of the underworld. He does spend his time in the mortal world to manage his club and his way of gaining souls to the underworld is making bargains with humans and he makes bargains with humans when they are desperate for example people have come to him asking to for example save their loved one from death and they really want them they want them to just live a longer life and so that that person has a little more time to spend with them hades does understand their desperateness so hades ends up striking a bargain with them he will save this person from death if this person gives them something else in return if that person isn't able to give what hades needs or wants hades will take their soul and send them to the underworld persephone in this series she is a little more unaware of the way of the mortal world or sometimes the gods she has heard about rumors of them and it is because just like laura olympus and i think that this is just a a well-known or universal story of persephone being guarded by her mother being locked up in her house and not being allowed to open herself to the outside world which does contribute to her ignorance and being a little more naive about the ways of the mortal world in this series she doesn't room with artemis she is rooming with i it's a human but this human has like some desire to meet one of the gods see one of the gods they have they hold the gods at like a higher pedestal so that is what is different in this series persephone does learn about the way hades makes dealing in this they do meet by chance she doesn't realize that she's meeting hades and like laura olympus they are intrigued by each other she wants to learn a little more about him and he feels that he should steer clear of her but then he has struck a bargain with her she has to fulfill her end of the bargain otherwise her soul will be his and she will go to the underworld and that is something that she cannot do because her mother allowed her to come to the mortal world to allow her to live like a normal human even though she is not if she goes to the underworld her mother will know that she has spoken to hades because she, persephone in this series is not allowed to speak to any of the gods she is meant to keep to herself she is supposed to basically do everything that she told her mother that she would do but persephone doesn't really have her own sense of power she borrows her mother's power to put this glamour over her to make her appear as though she is another human so that is another reason why she, her roommate is a human a touch of ruin is where we continue on with the relationship that hades and persephone has with each other and i won't say how that a touch of darkness ends because that is a spoiler to the way a touch of ruin starts but persephone has gained a little more independence and she has grown a lot more as a person persephone is still has more growing to do but she has found her own person and she feels like she can do what she came and wanted to do in the mortal world so that is this book i i don't think i can really say anything more literally all i'm gonna say because if i keep talking i'm gonna spoil <laughs> The last book on my TBR is a bit more of a reach. I'm not sure if I'm going to get to it, but I did buy the second book in this series and I would like to at least get a jump start on this book before the second book comes out. And this month might be my chance to get a, a jump start. But the second book, um, the, not the second, the last book in this video is a fourth wing by rebecca yaros i am one of the few people that have not yet read this book um i whenever a book is so hyped up on booktube or bookstagram or on tiktok i'm one of those people that's just like i run away from it i don't want to read it you know why because the book is hyped up so much that there's such high expectations that if I go into this book with such high expectations, I am more likely to be let down. And I have. 
and I don't want it to happen with this book considering this is um, a different kind of fantasy that than people than what people normally read or from what is normally published. I'm sure that a lot of people know what Fourth Wing is, but I'm gonna read the synopsis just so that I don't get anything wrong and that we both understand what this book is about. But so we follow a 20-year-old Violet Sorengal. Um, she was supposed to enter the scribe the scribe quadrant, living a quiet life among books and history. Now the commanding general, who is also her mother, um, she has ordered Vi Violet to join the hundreds of candidates thriving to become the elite of Nevere, also known as Dragon Riders. When you're smaller than everyone else and your body is brittle, death is only a heartbeat away because dragons don't bond to fragile humans. They incinerate them. With fewer dragons willing to bond than candidates, most would kill Violet to better their own chances of success. The rest would kill her just for being her mother's daughter, like Zayden. I'm not going to pronounce that last name. That last name is a little too difficult. Like Zayden, the most powerful and ruthless wing leader in the Riders Quadrant. She'll need every edge her wits can give her just to see the next sunrise. Yet with every day that passes, the war outside grows more deadly, the kingdom's protective wards are failing, and the death toll continues to rise. Even worse, Violet begins to suspect leadership is hiding a terrible secret. Friends, enemies, lovers, everyone at Basketh War College has an agenda has an agenda because once you enter, there are only two ways out. Graduate or die. I'm intrigued how this book is going to go. Um, I, I l like Enemies to Lovers. I won't say it's like my favorite trope. I don't think I have a favorite trope. I definitely like like single dad trope or forbidden lovers. Um, I do enjoy Enemies to Lovers. But for this book, I am intrigued the fact that it's regarding dragons. Now, there are many books out there that have had dragons before so I'm interested to see why this book is so special and why it's so hyped. I've seen people that have absolutely loved this book and rated five stars. I've also seen I've also seen people who have understood the hype but they haven't enjoyed the book as much as other people but they have still given it a high rating of like four stars for example so I'm excited to see where I fall on this spectrum I do think that I will enjoy this book but I'm interested to see what makes it so different from the rest so when I first heard of this book it kind of made me think of Shadow and Bone um that series not like it's I don't I don't think dragons exist in that world but do mythological creatures do exist in that world people do have powers but the reason why it reminds me of Shadow and Bone, I actually also haven't read that book. Let's clear that up. In Shadow and Bone, she is like, she's one of like the people who um, transcribe the scrolls. She's like a map maker. So she um, transcribes um, the map of the world. In this book, she's trying to become a scribe. This is another, it's a, it's a quiet life, just like to the main character in Shadow and Bone. So that's where I do have this like, okay, I get it. I, I get where we're going. I get the idea. Um, in terms of a quiet life, I, I'm, I'm interested to see like how like the shift is because she wants a quiet life. But now that she's being forced to become a dragon rider, like, on the orders of her mother seeing that shift i feel like will be funny to see because wow the way your life has changed so that is this book i'm not sure if i'll get to this book but if i do get to this book i might do its own separate reading vlog but that's really it that's this book these are all the books that i plan on reading in this month of october I'm excited to see how much of it I'm going to read. Like I said, I am a mood reader, so sometimes I do deviate from my own personal set TBR and I pick up other books that I'm interested in reading at the current set time. But 
those are all the books we have fourth wing we have lore olympus volume four we have a touch of ruin which is another greek mythology retelling of hades and persephone we also have crown of midnight book two of the throne of glass series and then we have the assassin's blade also part of the throne of glass series but it's technically a prequel so it's like 0.5 book of the series so that is all but i hope you guys enjoyed this video um let me know which book you guys would like for me to start reading first i will say that i will finish crown of midnight first before i start any other book but let me know which of these other books what is that for any of the other four books that you guys would like for me to read and I will try my best to get another video up as soon as possible and yeah, I will see you guys.